In this section, you'll learn about NAT, Network Address Translation. We already spoke a bit earlier about why we have the need for NAT, which is because of the exhaustion of the IPv4 address space. That was a while back though, so the first lecture here, I'll give you a refresher with an overview of that again. So once we've covered the need for it, we'll get into the different types of NAT and how to actually configure and verify them. We'll start off with static NAT, which is a way that we can do a fixed one-to-one -one translation between a private IP address on the inside and a public IP address on the outside. This is usually used when we've got servers on the inside, like a web server or an email server, for example, that needs to accept incoming connections from people out on the public internet. After static NAT, we will cover dynamic NAT. Dynamic NAT is usually used when you have got hosts on the inside that don't accept incoming connections. We're not running any services, but they do need to have outbound connectivity out to the internet. So for those hosts, we configure a pool of addresses which are used on a first come first serve basis. That is dynamic NAT. A problem with dynamic NAT is that we're usually gonna have more hosts on the inside than we've got public IP addresses available on the outside. So if we just do a standard dynamic NAT configuration, we're gonna run out of IP addresses to give our hosts. So the solution for that is to use PAT, port address translation that allows multiple hosts on the inside to reuse the same public IP address on the outside so that you don't run out of addresses. And that's the last NAT type that we'll cover in this section. Okay, that's everything that we're going to be covering. See you in the next lecture.